Well, of course, we expect that Russia um, is respecting the contracts that they have. But even if the weaponization of energy will continue or will increase um, in response to our decisions, I think that the European Union is ready to react. Of course, we will have to save energy. We will have to share energy. We have high level of storage and we are not afraid of Putin's decisions. We ask Putin to respect their contracts, but if they don't respect their contracts, we are ready to react. In terms of the ramifications for the economy, how bad could it be? Well, it's already quite bad if we think to the fact that gas price is 10 times the price it was one year ago. If we look at the fact that the inflation component of energy is around 40 percent now. So worse than this is difficult. What of course could happen is that the difficulties in supply could increase uh, with uh, Russians' decisions. But I repeat, we are preparing ourselves to such kind of decision since months. At the same time, and perhaps not coincidentally, um, the G7 has talked about now a further action on, on a price cap for Russian oil as well. Is that practical unless you get buy-in from the rest of the world who are still getting discounted Russian oil, the huge nations of the world, such as the Chinese and the, Rush, uh, the Indians as well? If we don't get buy-in at a global level, how useful is a price cap from the G7? Well, I think it's quite uh, important. Um, in the call we had yesterday, we discussed uh, mainly two things. First, um, the strength of uh, G7 countries uh, is not only because they are huge economies, they have a lot of population, but also because of their strength in the insurance uh, shipping sector, uh, which will be very important uh, for uh, implementing this ban. Second, we discuss how to build a broader global coalition. I'm sure that some countries, for example, Australia, South Korea, could be interested in this coalition. But I'm also convinced on the fact that other countries, uh, even without um, participating directly to this coalition, could have an advantage on the fact that oil prices are down. There is a lot of margin um, for oil prices. and. I'm sure that other countries will not maybe participate to the coalition, but will have advantages. So let me just recap what you just said. If, if, and this is my words, not yours. If Russia weaponizes oil and gas, then we have the ability to weaponize shipping and insurance in reaction. Well, uh, we, are, we are not weaponizing anything. We are reacting. Um, we are reacting to something that is happening since months uh, and at the end of the day we see the Russian economy uh, with 15 percent of inflation with a dramatic fall in import but surviving because of the high prices of oil and gas and we can't look to this situation without any reaction for months so the two decision announced yesterday, it was political announcements, uh, a gas uh, cap from Ursula von der Leyen and an oil cap from the G7. Strangely enough, they came in the same day, but this is a clear political message that enough is enough. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.